In this video, we'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the 2023 Ordinary Level Maths Leave Insert. I recommend you try the question before watching, and if you get stuck anywhere, feel free to ask for help in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. Check out my channel for a playlist with all the other questions. Question five is really a collection of questions that don't really fit anywhere for me. They're sort of generalized uh, questions about changing something, changing ratios really, changing the price of one thing, the distance, the speed, stuff like that. There's, a, I think, a four different questions in it. So let's jump, jump in. I'll do my best to teach it. It's not really the thing I'm best at teaching though, but I'll do my best. 5A part one starts off by, tell. they all tell us a story. So we do have to get good at reading a story and getting the numbers out. So it tells you about a company repairing train tracks. It costs 12,000 euros to lay 240 meters of train track. And they ask us to work out how much it would cost to lay uh, 320 meters. Now, you, if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me do something like this because this is how I always change something. If I want to change something from 240 meters to 320 meters and get the answer here, I just change it to one first. I just find out uh, 12,000 goes to 240. What goes to one? And then it's easy to change from one to anything. What goes to 320? Let me show you what I mean by that. To get from 240 to one, we just have to divide by 240. If we're gonna divide this side by 240, we better do it to that side. So we get 12,000 divided by 240. That's um, how much it would cost, put that in a calculator, and that's how much it would cost to go one meter. Then to find out how much it would go to get cost to go 320 meters, we just multiply one by 320. Then to be fair, we do it to the other side. So we get 320 multiplied by 12,000 divided by 240. Now, a lot of people would um, just tell you to do this question. Ah, divide by 240, multiply by 320. I'd like to show you exactly where that's coming from. So you put this sum in a calculator and you should get uh, 16,000. 16,000 euro to go 320 meters. Um, just then to say that there are other ways to do this question. Some students might be much better at doing it in their head. They might notice things like uh, 240 is 80 away to this, and 80 is one third of this number. One third of this number is 4,000, so it should just cost 4,000 more. So that's how you might get to that. If you, if you can do it in your head, brilliant. Just tell the examiner what you're doing. Write a little English. Just tell them what you're doing in your head just in case uh, you might lose marks. Okay, on to part two. Um, okay, part two is a weird one. Um, I'm gonna do it the same way, but it's, it's not the main way I would do it. I'll show you then a different way to do it in a moment. Um, actually, let's squeeze it down here because it's not the main way I'm gonna do it. So it tells you it has six people uh, working and it takes them eight days to do something. How long, how long would it take them uh, going four days? Uh, four, yeah, sorry, six people are working, it takes them eight days to do the job. If four people were working, how long would it take them to do the job? Now you might try and do it this way and the answer would go the wrong way because it's not, six does not go to eight like this. It goes to one over eight. It's inversely relation. And we're changing six to the four. So I, I could just do it the same way. I'm, I'm gonna show you my thought process. Then I'll show you a bit of an easier way. So six goes to one over eight. To change from six to one, divide by six. So that's one over eight divided by uh, six. Just multiply the bottom by six. Going from one to four, I multiply by four. And that's at uh, the top is multiplied. So four over eight multiplied by six. The four goes into the eight two times. So that's the same as uh, one over 12. So four people working would take 12 days to do it. Now that's, um, I'm just showing you that because that's how I do all of these questions. I'm gonna do the next questions in some sort of similar way. But it's just a lot harder for students when it's inverted like this. So I'd show you how most students would probably do it. Most students would probably just take six and eight and say six people working, eight days to do it. And then just play around with some numbers. For example, um, 
half the people. What if there was only three people working? How long would it take? 16 days. Now lots of students are gonna write down four here. Half the people, half the days. That's the mistake a lot of students would make. Don't worry, most, most people, not most, they're probably 20, 30% of people make that mistake. It means you're going too fast. Think it through. If half the people are working on a job, it should take twice the time. And I'd, I'd just stay playing around with this. Um, what if one person was working? It should take three times more, more time. Three times less people, three times more time. Uh, three multiplied by 16 is uh, 48. 48, um, and then four. Well, let's go to two. Twice the people, should take half the time, 24 days. Um, and then we're trying to get the four, aren't we? So twice again, should be 12 days. Four people should take uh, 12 days to do the job. Same answer as I got here, but I think most students would have understood this a little better. Anyway, that's my hope. Uh, let me rub this out and we'll move on to the next part. Okay, on to part B. We have two towns, A and B, and a train goes between them. And we, they tell us the distance between the towns is 120 kilometers, and the speed the train goes is 180. They're simply asking us for the time. Now, you could actually do this with ratios, like I did in part A. Like, you can use ratios for a lot, but really, we have formulas for this one. We have uh, some distance and time formulas. So let's see, speed, I, I always remember the speed formula. All these are in your uh, formula book, by the way. Um, I, I mostly just remember the speed because speed is equal to distance over time. It's in the units. But you can use this to get it all. Uh, D would be equal to S times T, and T would be equal to D over S. They'd be your, your speed and distance formulas. So for B part one, they simply asked, how long does it take to get from town A to town B? Here's your distance, here's your speed, how long, what time? So T is equal to distance 120 divided by speed 180. And you put that in the calculator or you can cancel it out yourself, which should get two over three. And this is in hours. So that's your answer to part one. And to part two then, let's put it here. Part two, instead of going from A to B, they're asking us what the average journey is to do A to B back to A. So we go back to A. And they tell us a few extra things. Um, they tell us the speed going from B to A. It's a bit faster, 220. So that might mean maybe it's on a hill. Uh, maybe you're going uphill to get from A to B, and then you're going downhill to get back. So they're going a bit faster. So it's a, this is a tricky question in that you have to figure out a few things yourself. And the, you're, they're asking you for the, the whole journey from A to B and back again. So you need a total distance. So um, let's, uh, I'm gonna leave this because I'm gonna come back to this space in a moment. Total, uh, total uh, journey we'll put over here. And that's because here I'm gonna do B to A. B going to A, and this was already A going to B. Because the total journey, a few things we can get, the total distance would be D is equal to 240. 120 to here, 120 back. Total distance 240. Time, we don't know. And speed, uh, we don't know. That's what they're, and that's the one they're asking us for. They're asking what's the speed in this total journey? So um, distance was easy, we added the two up. But time, we know how long it took this journey. We, we need to know this journey here. How long does it take on this journey? So again, what do we know here? We know distance is 120. We know the speed, they told us that it's um, 220. So we need to know the time, and we have the formula for that. D over S, 120 over 220. If you put this in a calculator, we should get, um, let's see, six over 11. So um, two thirds of an hour to go to the first part, six elevenths of an hour to go to the next part. Lots of students would put this in a calculator and get a decimal place. That's fine, um, although just a hint, the, the question doesn't ask for any decimal places, doesn't tell you to round off. So that means our final answer 
And spoiler alert, it won't have any decimal places. It'll be a nice round number. Um, so if you do take a decimal place here or here, you're probably gonna end up with decimal places at the very end. If Once you take enough of them, like maybe three or four um, uh, significant numbers, you're still gonna be fine. The examiner will be fine with that, but it could mess you up, just, just, just to let you know that. And it's often, there is hints in the questions. When they, when they ask for decimal places, you're gonna see decimal places. When they don't, you're not. Okay, so it takes this time to go to the first part, this time to go to the next part. It's a smaller number, nearly, nearly half an hour. That's uh, two thirds of an hour. So you'd expect that, because they're going faster. Okay, so what's the total time? We have the total distance. The total time is two over three plus six over 11. And if we put that, we could do that yourself, but go ahead and put in a calculator. You'll get um, 40 over 33. So then to get the, dis the speed, which is what the question was asking overall, uh, speed is equal to distance, all the way back here, speed is equal to distance over time. Distance over 40 over 33. Um, if you're putting this in a calculator, use a bracket or something, uh, be easier, or if you want to do it yourself, um, you could also flip this upside down and multiply it by 33 over 40. However you do it, uh, put in a calculator and you should get, uh, let me just check, um, 198. Uh, that says, let me write it again here, 198 kilometers per hour. That's the average speed. This makes sense then. Always check your answer to common sense. The first part of the journey was 180 kilometers an hour. The second part of the journey was 220 kilometers an hour. The average of the two should be somewhere between here and here. And it's uh, pretty much nearly in the middle. Not, not exactly in the middle because they were doing this for less time than they were doing that one. Okay, that's a final answer to the final part of question five. I hope that helped. And if you have any questions, please free, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer. Until next time, have a great day.